Hi, welcome to our tutorial on model monitoring in practice. My, my name is Krishnaram Kintapadi. I'm the chief scientist at Fiddler AI, where we are building an enterprise platform for machine learning model monitoring and explainability. Together with my collaborators, Hima Lakraju from Harvard, Pradeep Nadarajan from Alexa AI, and Mehrnoosh Sameki from Azure AI, uh, we are delighted to present this tutorial. You can find more information about the tutorial at the tutorial web page, which is linked here. We have included links to other tutorials as well as various resources um, yeah, at this website. We will also be posting the tutorial slides and video at the website as well. Let's start with understanding why we need machine learning model monitoring. Over the last several years, we have observed a variety of instances where uh, machine learning models have not behaved as they were intended. Uh, for instance, back in, in around 2016, Joy Bolamvini observed that facial detection softwares, uh, in fact, often did not detect her own face. These softwares tended to work well for uh, light-skinned faces, but often failed for darker faces. Perhaps this motivated uh, Joy to uh, collaborate with Timnit Gebru on the famous gender shades work, uh, which showed that commercially available facial analysis software had nearly zero error rates for light-skinned men, but had very high error rates for dark-skinned women. So of course, this is uh, not limited just to say uh, facial analysis. Uh, over the last few years, we have seen a variety of instances ranging from photo tagging, web search, criminal justice, hiring, and so on, where machine learning models have exhibited biases uh, for different subgroups. So why is this happening? We all know that uh, there, there may be different types of inherent biases present in society. And often these biases could get reflected in the training data. After all, the training data is often obtained through explicit human judgments or through implicit user feedback. The machine learning models are very good at capturing patterns in the data. And in some cases, they may even amplify the biases which are already present in the data. This, topic has gotten so much attention that there are even popular books written on this topic, like the ones shown here. At the same time, if you take a different dimension, which is uh, say privacy, we have seen a variety of settings where privacy failures have occurred at least over the last two decades, if not more. These have ranged from re-identification attacks to uh, attacks on auditing, attacks on web search logs, uh, attacks on Netflix challenge data sets, social networks, genomics uh, data sets, um, uh, recommender systems, so on and so forth. And fairly recently, we have seen even a paper showing that large language models tend to memorize uh, uniquely occurring tokens in the training data. For example, tokens like uh, phone numbers or addresses, even if they occur just once in the training data, which might be considered by the larger public as potential breach on privacy. Just like privacy, the machine learning models have also been shown to be uh, uh, prone to adversarial attacks. You may all have seen this famous example where if you take the photo of Panda and add noise, which is imperceptible to, in, imperceptible to humans, the machine learning models starts predicting a completely different uh, class, in this case, Gibbon. Perhaps this may not be as concerning, but as these models are getting used more and more in critical applications, for example, in uh, autonomous driving settings, these become problematic. Yeah, here is an example where the ground truth is the speed limit sign shown on the left. And the model, after 
a small amount of noise is added to the input predicts that it's it's a stop sign these are not just limited to digital photos uh, or digital videos it has also been shown that such attacks are applicable even on physical world stop signs or physical world uh, objects uh, in this uh, example the the one shown on the top is a stop sign with with very slight changes and it was predicted to be a different uh, class and similarly the one at the bottom was predicted to be a stop sign with very small changes so more broadly if you take a step back uh, the machine learning and ai teams today face a variety of challenges with their models these range from lack of model transparency to model decay model bias or challenges with meeting compliance and so forth um, for instance so uh, we we have seen challenges such as uh, the the ones faced by facebook in, in the in the context of how facebook's models work and the lack of enough transparency on those or we have seen challenges with the models degrading over time whether it's due to the pandemic or other real world condition changes so of course we just dis discussed challenges with the bias in the models uh, likewise often compliance is also a key challenge when it comes to highly regulated domains the underlying reason for many of these uh, aspects is that the machine learning models often are highly opaque there may not be explanations of how the model is behaving often even the model developers themselves do not have a good understanding of how the model is behaving which features are important whether there are biases in the prediction or the performance of the model and more importantly in the context of this tutorial often there are not enough tools to monitor the models once they are deployed as a result the practitioners often don't have visibility into how the models are behaving once they are deployed in production this affects a variety of stakeholders uh, ranging from say business users who wonder whether they can trust the machine learning or ai models to data scientists who are perplexed as to how the model is working in practice or auditors regulators and other interested entities who wonder whether the decisions made by the model are fair or not so see so here are some quotes we have uh, seen from different personas who are involved with operationalizing machine learning models uh, for example we a quote from a chief scientist uh, discusses how model drift or changes in the real world conditions and the lack of timely detection of such changes cost over half a million dollars often the machine learning practitioners encounter a lot of time before they are able to detect and thereby troubleshoot the problem sometimes they they are worried whether they will have to go and testify in front of legislators because even they themselves may not have a good understanding of how the models are behaving and so on and so forth so with with given these um, concerns so the the area of uh, what's often called as model performance management has uh, become more and more accepted amongst the machine learning uh, practitioner community by model performance management or broadly model governance what we are referring to is how to understand the behavior of the model both offline before the model is deployed and online once the model is deployed D during the offline stage we may want to understand whether there are any gaps uh, in the training data used to train the model whether there are biases in the training data uh, whether uh, the, there may be feature quality issues How, can we understand the behavior of the model as a whole uh, can we construct model cards or data sheets associated with training data can we discover failure modes of the model the 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 segments where the model cannot be relied upon 
so that we can then fall back on human experts for those regions. Can we discover uh, slices where the model may be poorly performing so that we can perform root cause analysis and perhaps uh, 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 include more appropriate training data or retrain the model or even develop a separate model and so on. During the online stages, we may want to um, uh, compare how a new model behaves as compared to the existing model during A-B testing. In addition to understanding whether the new model provides improvements overall, we may also want to understand whether the new model improves for all interested groups of people, not just overall. Uh, and finally, we, we may want to monitor the model over time to detect whether the model is degrading in performance, degrading with respect to other dimensions like bias, explainability, uh, adversarial robustness, and so forth. And together with all of this, once detected, we then want to understand what may be causing these issues and be able to come up with a way to fix those issues. So if there is one takeaway from this tutorial, it's that we have to consider the online aspects as much as the offline aspects. Uh, monitoring deployed models is at least as important as validating and vetting the models before deployment. Just like we encounter issues uh, during model validation, we may also encounter similar issues once the model is deployed. We have to think about not only accuracy of the model, but also dimensions like bias or adversarial uh, robustness or per perhaps any potential privacy breaches, uh, uh, so on and so forth, once the model is deployed. With this uh, um, introduction, uh, in the rest of the tutorial, we will be briefly covering three dimensions. First, we will describe what are the nuances or an overview of monitoring deployed machine learning models. We will uh, categorize that into two parts. The first part will focus on mo model performance degradation and the common issues underlying such degradation. The second part would focus on what are the things to worry about beyond just model performance itself. Uh, uh, this can include bias, feature attribution changes, uh, adversarial robustness, privacy violations, uh, and so on. Then in the second part, we will present a few case studies to illustrate how this is done in practice. And finally, we will conclude with a few uh, key takeaways from this uh, tutorial. For deeper discussion of some of these topics, please refer uh, previous tutorials, for instance, a tutorial on responsible AI, which we presented at uh, FACT and other conferences last year, and many other similar uh, tutorials on these topics. Thank you.